That is one thing that sets us apart from other systems of belief. There are people out there that believe that our Bible is nothing more than a book of fables, fairy tales, and stories. That's why I have, in the last few years, tried so hard to stop myself from referring to the accounts of Scripture as Bible stories. Bible stories come in a book that you buy in the book area at Walmart. You read them to your kids and your grandkids at night trying to get them to be quiet and go to sleep. These are true historical Bible accounts. The Word of God records historical uh, events that took place and you can, you can read history books and they will verify that. And so these are not stories, these are, these are true accounts. And, and so one of, the, one of the basis, one of the very vital things about independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist Christians is that we believe the Bible is the sole authority for faith and practice. Right. By soul, I mean the onlyest. I know that's not proper English, but that's the easiest way I can say it. That's the hillbilly coming out in. My roots are in Kentucky. Well, there's some other good and godly people here. Amen. <laughs> So church, let me, let me ask this. When did the church start? When did the church start? There's different schools of thought on when the church started. Uh, some Bible colleges will teach you that, that the church started somewhere between Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 and Matthew chapter 18 verse 17. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, Well, let's look at verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be back in your house this morning. I thank you for everyone who has gathered here today. Now, my Father, I pray you know that I stand in need this morning. I cannot do what is before me this morning. Precious Holy Ghost of God, I pray that you would fill me afresh with your power. Help my words to be easily understood this morning. I pray that you would open the hearts of the people who gathered here this morning and those who will be watching by way of the Internet. I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Help us to love you more. Help us to love your Bible more. Help us to fall in love with the church afresh. God, I pray that you get all the praise and the honor and the glory because we've asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So some schools of thought believe that the, the church started between Matthew 16 and 18 because he does say, future, I will build my church. If you look at Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, let's turn there real quick. Verse 15, the Bible tells us, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So some, some people teach that, that the church started between Matthew 16, 18 and Matthew 18 and verse 15. That is, that is one school of thought. There is another school of thought that says the church was birthed in Acts chapter 2. I'm not going to divide with you over however you feel about it. I'm not here to give you my opinion. I'm here to share with you what the Word of God says this morning. 
And this morning I share that because I want, I want us to understand that the church was established by the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his church. It is not my church. It's not anybody else's church. It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the living, loving Lamb of God. Amen. Now, church, he does appoint the pastor to be the under-shepherd over the church. So he gives me some responsibilities that, of things that I need to take care of concerning the church. Some of those things, just to be quite frank, are dirty. Some, there are some things in church that I, I just, to be honest, I don't like to do them. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when sheep go astray and I have to, to take the rod and the staff and try to bring them back into the fold. Yeah. I don't like it when I have to go to somebody like Matthew chapter uh, 16 said, when they have sinned against me, I don't like to have to go to people and tell them, look, did I understand this correctly? Did you mean this this way? But we need to make this right. That's uncomfortable. It's, it's not pleasant to do. But it is Bible principle and we need to do it. That's right. Part of the local church. Yes. And so the local church is a called out body of believers who are autonomous. That means we are ruled under God. We rule ourselves. And again, the, God has called the pastor over the church, but the pastor is a servant. Yes. I'll be honest with you. I don't like doing housework, do I, Miss Tar? No, sir. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? If I spill coffee all over the fellowship hall, Rosie isn't going to come mop it up. I have called her and called her and called her and she just won't show up. So I fired her yesterday. Sometimes, even the pastor has to put on his blue jeans and do things he doesn't like to do. Now men, I don't mind mowing the grass once in a while. Just wanted to get that out there. So today I want to look at the autonomy of the local church. Again, that just means that we govern ourselves. We don't report to anybody other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's right. The reason I started last week with the Word of God is because the Word of God is our instruction manual to operate the church. Amen. Or it should be. Yes, sir. It should be. There are so-called denominations out there that answer to boards and councils and and hierarchy, and that's not that's not Bible. I don't I don't. We could study into that, but I don't care. I don't care where they got that. They need to get right with God, get saved, and live according to the Word of God under His authority in a good, independent, fundamental Bible believing Baptist church. That's right. Now I'm not so foolish as to be a Baptist brighter. Say what that mean? That means there are believing church. There are people out there who believe if you're not a Baptist, you're not born again. That's not what my Bible teaches. The last time I read Romans, the book of Romans, it tells me, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Brother George and I have been kind of joking a little bit. He's got some Pentecostal background in his family. Lord, forgive him for that. <laughs> But if they believe the Bible the way it is, the way it's written, guess what? I can fellowship with them. Yeah. I would not invite them here to preach in this pulpit, but I can fellowship with them. Yeah. We can agree on some things that we can agree on, and then we can agree to disagree agreeably. That's right. Mark that one on the calendar. <laughs> so what about this thing of the autonomy of the local church? Well... What do we mean by that? We mean simply that the, the church is self-governed. Each local church is free and accountable only to Jesus. That's right. Now, if I as the pastor, as the head of the church, end up, I don't even know the names of any of the bars around here, thank you, Lord. But if I end up in a bar somewhere in Avon and somebody sees me, the first thing you need to do is you need to come to me. That's right. 
And if I say, leave me alone, let me live my life, then you need to get somebody in the church who is a church leader, who is a spiritual person. Just because you're a church leader doesn't mean that you're always spiritual, okay? And come to me again and say, preacher, this is what we saw. Would you explain to us what was going on? Maybe you saw me coming out of there after I'd just been there for two and a half hours trying to drag somebody out of there that I know that you don't. Or just maybe, just maybe the devil tripped me up and tricked me. And I said, oh, I can't take it anymore. And I wouldn't. Good night, I can't stand the taste of that stuff. But it could happen. Yes, it can. It only takes one time. Yes, it does. And so under the authority of El Bethel Baptist Church, you have the responsibility to come to me and say, did we see what we saw? Are we understanding this right? And when I say, I told you the last time, get out of my face and leave me alone, then you come to the church. And only then. And then the church has to discipline me. That's not pleasant. I've been involved in, in not church discipline, but I have been involved in church discipline a couple of times. And you know what? Forgive me how I'm saying this, but it's a lost art in the church today. Yes. It really is. That's true. We discipline our children and our grandchildren. Well, Miss Tara and I do. Uh, why? Because we want them to live in a way that pleases God. We want them to be productive members of society, correct? Yes. 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 Does God not want his children to live right, do right, act right, walk right, talk right? Yes. yes he does. That's part of the process. <coughs> I did not enjoy getting spanked as a child. Yes, and I don't in, I never enjoyed spanking my children. And I sure don't enjoy having to do these kind of things with my brothers and sisters. But it doesn't matter whether I want to or not. I'm commanded to, number one. And the Bible tells us if we do this and we do it in a spirit of love, guess what? We could restore that person. And you know what happens then? They come back into the church and it's like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, after, after our kids mess up, we discipline them, ground them, get over it, we restore them. Do we keep breaking it up? We shouldn't. Jesus doesn't bring it up on us anymore. But this all goes through the local New Testament Pleasant, but we're told to. And so the church belongs to Jesus. Yes, it does. It's his church. Yes, sir. So if we're if we're going to be the church the way that we're supposed to be, we're going to have to follow the word of God. I'll finish this another day. But church, just understand, this is why, as a pastor, I lead the way I lead. I'm not a dictator. I'm not. I am very hard-headed, I'll promise you. You can say amen. Amen. Thank you. I can see in her eyes she won't. <laughs> But I'm telling you, church, we've got to continue to, to operate as a church according to the Word of God. Yes, sir. Because the day that we don't, we're going to be in trouble with Jesus. That's true. That's why I'm leading the way I'm leading. I'm trying to do what I believe the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do. Again, I, I've said before, there's some things you don't have to pray about. 
You don't have to pray about, well, God, should I go to church this morning? How about we follow the commands of the Word of God, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a man or some is so much more as you see the day approaching. I don't have to pray about that. I don't have to ask God, God, do you want me to pray today? No, pray without ceasing. I don't have to ask about tithing. That's why. I don't have to. I don't have to pray about should I witness. There's people. There's people out there that call them Christians. They've been praying for forty years about whether they should witness or not. The Bible says go. Brother George, forgive me. I hope I'm not speaking out of school, but. One thing that he always talks about is having a good testimony before the people that he's around so that he can witness to them. Mm -hmm. Our brother's a truck driver. Mm -hmm. He goes a lot of places that you and I would never go. And you know what he's doing? Carrying the gospel with him mm -hmm. in a 64 foot trailer. Mm -hmm. That's right. Brother Paul and Sister Angel, they're doing the same thing. They're going everywhere, man. And if they... If they yield themselves to the Lord Jesus, they can carry a big old pocket full of gospel tracts. I'd recommend the ones that don't have my picture on. <laughs> share them all over the country. Why? It's commanded. But we, we come willing. By the way, this is not the church. This is a building. Yes, it is. I love this old building. Yeah. Both parts of it. It's frustrating. It is. Because mm -hmm. it's like me, it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. This is a Bethel Baptist church. Amen. Amen. That's right. Say, where are you going with this, preacher? I don't know. I'm just trying to tell you that God has established his church here in Avon. And he's given us the rule book, if you will, on how to run it. So we got to stick with that blessed old book. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the day, the day that, that I don't have a mind anymore, pleasantly call a business meeting behind my back and vote me into retirement and find me some young whippersnapper that loves God like I do, loves that old King James Bible like I do, Stand up here and rip the song, snort, shout, and preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's what can please God. That's right. Yes, sir. Well, Brother Brian, you got a song? We'll have a song of invitation this morning. Thanks.